All right, hello everyone. Welcome to once again your Thursday night edition of the Midwest F1 League. I am Crash McQueen, and I am joined as per usual with my co-host El Majaco, or known more as just Jacko. How are you doing today, Jacko? I'm fantastic. So happy you are too, Crash. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Um, now I'm going to ask you this right out of the gate here. So we're in Zandvoort. Uh, now. It's obviously never hasn't this track hasn't been tested on F1. This was uh, one of my pre-race questions, but I'd like to ask you right out of the gate: How good do you think track uh, Zandvoort is going to be for IRL yeah, F1? Like yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I mean, it has been run in F1 before, not this exact layout, but '85, yeah. I believe, louder one here, and I believe there was at least a race in '83. I'm not sure how many more there were other than that, but this new layout, I think. Certainly, it suits modern cars more than the old layout did, but it's going to be a uh, procession, I would think. It's going to be very difficult to make overtakes apart from at Turn 1, Tarzan, uh, with a DRS, which I believe there is going to be a DRS straight there, but it's after the, the banking, so it's going to be pretty short. So, oh, uh, is it? Into Turn 2? Or, you, or no, no, you're no, saying no, no, just the, the pit the straight. Turn, but yeah. It's not going to be available through the banking like I thought it might be. Okay. We've seen DRS through through um, some turns like that before. Yeah. Like in like 2012, you could you could use it the whole lap even. So 130R Red Bull were using it, and uh, you know it's going to be very short DRS straight. So I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be much faster. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I'm I'm just excited what it's gonna what's gonna do. Of course, we didn't get a chance to see Vietnam, but uh, we'll uh, yeah. The, this is this is one one of the other new tracks that were supposed to come in 2020, but of course the way COVID was, it didn't give us the chance. So, but I'm happy to see this one stay. You know, you know Vietnam was kind of whatever, but this one's going to be. I think this one's more exciting of the two. But it looks like we're starting to get drivers out on track here. Uh, you got any predictions for who we're going to see on uh, on the front row here? Well, I think it's always difficult to bet against the likes of Jim and Mystic to be up the front. Um, Scuba Steve is calling his shot uh, in the chat there, saying that he's looking to be first tonight. Yeah. And he's got form at this track um, in uh, JK Esport, which is run by Scavney, one of our competitors here. Uh, Scuba Steve actually won the race at this track a few weeks ago. And uh, Mystic, Jim, myself, we were all in the race, for example. Uh, a couple of others as well. Uh, Bacon, for example, we were all in it. So, uh, you know, yeah, he's got form. Whether he can repeat that success is, uh, is uh, up for debate, but we'll see. Yeah, he's definitely showing some confidence heading in here. I'm excited to see what he can do. I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll back his shot. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna line up on at least the front row. I'll peg him second. I think, uh, I think Mystic is gonna take first. Okay, fair enough. Well, I mean, Mystic has uh, unfinished business at this track, yet to win here, of course. I don't think it was raced in season three. Uh, season one, of course, Cam won. He was, uh, that was before Mystic even joined uh, Division One, I believe. And then season two, there was that Ferrari one two, which really frustrated Mystic. Oh yeah, the, uh, the DRS train. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking like we're getting the first time set from JC Blackley, really using the outside of those left tires there to really bank it hard around that turn. Uh, I'm not sure where we're gonna find him. Of course, he is uh, coming off a podium in Brazil, but uh, I don't think he had the same fortune in Bahrain. Or no, yes. Yeah, we were in Bahrain last week. It was kind of weird because we were in Division Two. I'm trying to try get myself back onto the swing of things. Now, do you think we've cur we we're Jinnet to win its curse? Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily believe in that sort of thing, but it is a hell of a coincidence uh, yeah. that that we spectate and we, we witness an Alfa Romeo victory, whether that be Mystic or whether that be the gentleman last week, Fuzel. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope it isn't a curse. Uh, I hope that we do get to see Jin win uh, with our voices behind it at some stage. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd be happy to see anyone win, really, uh, as long as it's an exciting race. I think yeah. we should mention Fredhead as a possible contender as well, because I think every race that he's been in in the one, he's been on the podium. So that's that's no small feat. But yeah, very true, very true. He's uh, we can't we can't forget about that guy. He's got some serious pace as well. And he has come in in last year's uh, final race at uh, Singapore. It was he just he 
just beat Mystic out on straight pace, and uh, you don't really see that too often. Mystic's kind of guy you gotta out strategize. From what I've collected here in Midwest, that's at least. Oh, for sure. Unless your name is Honda. Uh, yeah. Which, uh... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Moving on. Oh, we got a. Uh, we got someone off. Quite see who that is actually. That's uh, a Tiger. Tiger Nazca. Yes. So Step... is this his first Division One appearance, or was he like here last week? I don't uh... know. Oh no, he was in Division 2 last week, wasn't he? Yes, yeah. he's stepping in for young DJ CJ this week. And I think. Red Bull really going through their drivers here this season. Um, Cake being the only one to be here every round, but it was C Barry at one stage. Yeah, they're using up their whole uh, youth academy. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull. Marco in there, throwing them in and throwing them out straight away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not good enough. <laughs> we got, got a half uh, with some trouble there, unless he's just letting people through. That would be Fredhead, I believe. Yeah, I think he's just letting people through. So a lot of people are setting laps on mediums so far. We'll probably see them come in and change to softs. I believe the race can be completed on softs and mediums without even troubling the hards. So, uh, and I don't see why you'd qualify on anything other than the softs. So Mystic actually got really sewered on his first hot lap. I haven't even noticed. He's actually the slowest of the time set. And then there you go. Okay, he comes back around on the softs and sets the fastest lap. You really He's gonna... have to get that in in a few seconds. Yeah, say that exactly, exactly. Yeah, Mystic actually sucks. This just in. <laughs> oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that didn't last long, though. Well, I'm getting a pretty good view here of Mystic and his... Uh, nice green helmet, and there's a purpose behind the green helmets this week, I believe, Crash, so maybe you'd like to uh, explain that. Now, honestly, I don't know too much about it. If you know more than I do, by all means, take over, but from what I know, it's in support of one of our, uh, our, you know, one of the favorite drivers around here. He pokes his head in and helps out a lot in the league, and that's Spaceman. Supposedly, uh, I don't want to speak out of ignorance here but oh speaking of the man hey he's in the chat how's it going space man but i've heard some hey. yeah hard times have fallen his way and uh that's what the green is in support of unless in the, I don't, yeah like i said i don't want to speak out of ignorance I, I i don't that's just what i've heard well you've heard exactly the same thing i've heard okay i believe it's the color of some for some of support for Mental health, but I could be wrong on that. Okay, give a shout out for the green helmets in support of Spaceman and mental health awareness. Okay, yeah. There you so. go. Yeah, the green, that, that exact shade of green apparently as well is um, in support of mental health awareness, and Spaceman has suggested that uh, in his final week of racing, I believe that is Spaceman. Confirm that. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of the guys are. Uh, are sporting that and it's not just for the Aston Martin green but it's in uh it's out of respect and uh it's it, it's something that we take very closely here at Midwest F1 League for sure with uh with our past charitable drive for such the same thing so and anything to, to do to help out any of our uh any of our own we uh we we fully jump on in we don't just take one little one little pussyfoot step forward but a lot of drive yeah <laughs> I like Scavney's act, his um, version of the helmet, actually. Maybe you ah. could feature that at some point. Yeah, I'll jump on board with that. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I can't get the best look. There that we go. That looks kind of Brazilian for some reason. <laughs> But yeah, early on here, after the first set of laps have been uh, put in, uh, Mystic Joker's holding the lead right now, but Jin has set his lap on the... Yes, he did set his best lap on the mediums. So, room to grow. Scavney goes up, speaking of, going into third. I believe that's Random Sirius over the line, and he went up into sixth. JC into seventh, and Yolmir, the other McLaren, into the pits. And I think that's Will Ann's. He did set a very slow lap, and he's going to come into the pit. Not feeling it quite yet. I've got to say, I'm a little bit surprised with these times. I think there's a lot, either a lot more time to find, or the track conditions are not favorable, because low nines, I would expect, um, the front runners to be achieving. And that's just simply not the case at the moment, so... I'd, I'd say it's probably not the best conditions currently. It's my guess. Yeah, I mean, Scuba Steve setting a purple sector too. 
so he's finding a little bit of pace currently sitting eighth with his fastest lap initially set on the mediums uh helg also coming around we'll stay on board with helg and then we'll quickly switch over to scuba steve as they come over the line helg jumps up into second huge and then scuba steve taking the fastest lap just barely away from mystic joker i don't think that'll get it done though no uh, as I was saying, this race has been um, run, well, this track has been run before uh, with a lot of these gentlemen, and we saw a 9-2 on that occasion. And even even my lap was quicker than these laps, and I don't think I, I was fully prepared. So, as I'm saying, this is not full pace or uh, with some track discrepancy going on. Uh, Smith Pell recovering from a bit of a loss of uh, grip there. <laughs> it looked like around turn four. Yeah, Thankfully, yeah not locked anyone's lap, which is very easy to do if you spin out in that location. So Fred had quicker right now, but it doesn't look like he's going to improve too much. Oh, he proves enough though. I guess the, yeah, yeah, the times are enough. the times are so very tight. I didn't. He he wasn't too much quicker from his initial time on the medium, so that's why I said that. But it's enough to go fastest right now. Fredhead sitting in the front row, one two alongside Scoop Steve. But like we said, I don't think that's enough. Not too bad of a lap by Helg as well, going into the one oh nines. Quick little shout out to that. So I like that is gone. Let me get him back. I don't think I have any. Oh, so you loco, but um, I don't think so. Yellow flags all over the track from drivers pulling off to the side. Tiger and Ask. Oh, must have been parked in an awkward spot on the track when he lost connection. Uh, Matt Rosie taking fastest lap now, going the first driver into the low 109s now. Now that is unfortunate for Sword Loco. He did have a lap time prior to that, which was an 11.9, which would have been good enough for 18th currently. Uh, but that will stop him from having any chance at the uh, hardest charger. Do you want to get on board with Jeanette and uh, go through the entire lap with us? All right. Okay, yes, we are here in Turn 1, which is also known as Tarzan, the only name I know on this track. Yeah, same. He takes it very nicely. Another banked... A lot of banked corners on this track, which makes it very unique in that regard. You can take a lot of lines through turn four. Jin chooses a particularly fast one. And this will end the first sector up the top of the hill here. And he's well up on his time. Three and a half tenths, looking quite nice through there as well. Don't want to touch any of these curves because you've been flicked into a wall as I was yesterday on the F2, which was not pleasant at all. Nice apex there for the British driver and in the British car as well. He turns left oh. hand, turns a bit too much left, or is a bit too much throttle. He could open the DRS here if he wanted to, but it won't help him because he's facing the wrong way. You had to get that in. Sorry, Jin. Eh? <laughs> we, uh, we're not supposed to... We, I mean, we cursed him again. <laughs> oh, hey, you don't believe in it. You don't believe in it. You're going to no, start no. believing in curses real soon. If that keeps happening with Jin. Yeah. Should have... Should have enough time to get in and put on another fresh set of softs and it's take one more crack at it. You still have mediums is your best time for tactics. <laughs> oh my. Is he going to come into the pit or is he going to... Yeah, it looks like he's into the pit here. Oh Alright, well maybe we, should, maybe we should try that again. Let's leave that poor man alone. Yeah. <laughs> I I completely agree. It looks like Mystic's so coming around. So we should probably inform the viewers that... He picked up his first win last week because we didn't already say that. His first win. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So the one time that we don't cast Mystic, or sorry, when we don't, yeah, I guess when we don't cast Mystic as well, but when we don't cast Jin, he picks up his win. Right. Sui improving on his time, but not on position. Okay, how about jump on Smith Pell and try that one again? He's just coming into turn okay. one now. Okay, currently 16th, through Tarzan comes the Alpine. Gets a bit of curve there on the exit, which I wouldn't suggest is a great idea, but avoids the next two, which I would suggest is a good idea. Through this uh, long left, and takes a slightly different line to Jim, but uh, not too different. Doesn't get quite the exit the Aston Martin had, but as long as he stays facing the right way, it'll be a better lap. 
misses the apex a little bit there on the right sweeper. Um, that will cost maybe a tenth or two. Or oh, flatters the curb but saves the rear. So he clearly has a lot of rear wing, which is uh, probably quite advisable for this track, especially with that last turn being very uh, vicious if you lose the rear. You can end up losing a couple of wheels as well. There's the back DRS straight, which is basically useless and so, unless someone in front makes a mistake on the previous exit. And uh, now through the final two turns, very key corner here in order to get a good lap, good exit as well, if you want to make a pass or even defend in the race. And it uh, keeps it clean, doesn't take the wide line, which a lot of drivers will choose to. Comes across the line, improves P6. So uh, Alpine looking pretty good here, both in the top three rows of the grid so far. Uh, Super Nias is just picking himself up off the wall after he looks like he spun out around turn 7, but he actually didn't look like he sustained any damage. He was on his hot lap here, and he's starting to run out of time. Scuba Steve, oh, does he bin it? We need to get on board with a Red Bull. That's what it's I think that's a Williams, actually. Oh, and yeah, he's gone. But there is a tire left on track, though. Well, that won't be helpful for anyone else, will it? No. Random Sirius is going to come into the pit, so that's it for his qualifying. As was Super Ninas at breakneck speed into the pit lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So Super Ninas there without a time. So neither of the drivers in the last row of the grid will be able to challenge the hardest charger unfortunately. Super Ninas off the back of yet another F2 round victory yesterday. Very impressive around the same track. Uh, not having the same luck in the F1 cars. No, he's an, uh, he's a different animal when it comes to F2, hey? It is quite surprising that he's unable to translate it to, uh, to F1 so far at least. But uh, perhaps the man's putting a bit more time into practice on F2, which is entirely justifiable given that he's uh, a championship contender. Yeah, he's doing uh, way better than what I would have anticipated. He's a good driver, but I, the way he's driving in, in F2 is just is next level, really. Yeah, it's very impressive. Very impressive. Especially Bahrain. A lot more pace than everyone else. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Alright, well we've only got a minute and a half left here. We've got outlaps for the top three yeah, in 7th and 12th through to 17th also. So a lot of cars get to set perhaps their best time of the session, at least have an attempt at it. And, uh, I'm on board with Matt Rose, yes. He starts his lap right now. He'll have time for two laps should this one go wrong. I don't know if it's the best idea, but we'll see how that works out with the RS. With the Ferrari, uh, maybe they need to be I'm not entirely sure. As Jin improves to third position, only one hundredth behind P2. Hell well. isn't looking to improve right now unless he had a really poor sector three. Comes over and improves by five thousandths of a second. That's not enough to make any Super headway though. Super moment for the current officer though, Matt Rody, so this may not be an improvement. I'll continue on board with him just to see the next step is good though. But it did look very wide on the Alpine. It's a tenth down currently. Eddie Mystic in the box seat, but he's up at this stage. He needs to improve by roughly two tenths in order to snatch that pole away from the LP. Opening for DRS, overtake of Jin. He's not on a lap, and he'll probably not be able to set another lap. Ah, Mystic's also down. So at this stage, Matt Rose are looking pretty good. Tiger can't improve. Not sure who that was. Across the line comes Mystic, and no improvement time or position wise. He did actually make a nice last sector there, but that was not enough. Jim's into the pits. Matt Rosie's on another fly, and this time he's a tenth up on his previous best. It's the apex that I was talking about last lap. That continues hitting the apex is quite nicely. Hash is a half a second quicker, so this could look to jump him all the way up into fifth if he improves even more, and even to fourth. Yep, there it is. 
fourth, and how close it is from second through to fourth there. All on a 9 5. Impossible, not looking like he can improve. Helg into the pit as well. That's JC Blackley, I believe. He's invalid, so 16th is where he's going to have to start. Ooh. Matt backs out of his lap. He must have lost some delta there. Uh, it was up, but I saw the previous one. Redhead is uh, on the end lap, it looks like. Fake is invalid. And Tiak also on an ink lap. So I think that's the end of the session there. And that will be Matt Rosie on pole. With Mystic lining up alongside him in the front row. Yeah, the... Uh... You just kind of said, hey guys, you completely forgot about me. Fair enough, because <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I had him down for a top five, but uh, he goes and snatches it there. I mean, the door was kind of open with only nine fives uh, offered by Mr. Kim Kim. So, uh, yeah, well done to Matt, bouncing on that opportunity. So we've got a couple seconds until they bring this Red Bull into the garage here. We'll uh, pull up the results of last week, which, of course, uh, Jacko and I weren't... Uh, there to see so here we go you can see that uh Jin did take that win in the race of course that jacko weren't and i weren't at so the the curse is in question right now uh mystic does get second to get some good points and hash taking a podium as well um and then going down to the rest of the top five we see will ands and matt rosie so uh, a couple of quick Quick drivers there. That's a big, uh, big po points for uh, Will Ans. But if you want to take us through our qualifying order there, Jacko, go right ahead. Absolutely. So as we mentioned, it's a front row for Matt Rosie and Mystic Joker. Then we've got Jin and Hash on the second row. Hash, of course, second in the championship currently. Uh, we'll be looking to score some more good points. Redhead and Scuba Steve share the third row with Cake and Hell uh, on the fourth. Then we've got Yolmi and Bacon, who we both wish they would have been slightly a bit lower so they could have some fresh tyres like Will Anz does have in 11th place there, with uh, the second Alpine Smith Cal in 12th. Scavney with a lowly P13, although he's only three quarters of a second behind pole. Tiak, Random, JC Blackley, Tiger Nazca, and Sweewood lap times ahead of Super Ninas and Soy Loco, who uh, will be occupying the last row of the grid, and those two ineligible for artist charging, which we should try and remember by the end of the race. Yes, so bottom, bottom two, bottom two. Okay, um, and here we go. Speaking of the uh, the Drivers' Championship standings here, we'll uh, pull it up for everyone to see. Mystic Joker still leading the way with 395. Uh, Hash is second with 352. So maybe a bad showing or an unfortunate incident for Mystic Joker, and we could potentially see a lead change. Uh, Hash is staying fairly close through his entire um, dominance by Mystic Joker through the first four races. So... Uh, Hats off to you, Hash. We'll see if you can maybe uh, close the gap a little bit coming here in Zandvoort. Smith Pell third. A uh, little bit surprising, but... Or is that... It is 280, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's what finishing will do. This man, yeah. uh, all he's done is consistently finish at least. Uh, no matter whether that's, you know, quite high or a bit lower than he would uh, hope for. I mean, finishing is just so important because you get points for no matter what position you're in. Like, yeah. I and couldn't. That's what he's done. So congratulations to the P3 Smith. Yeah, we're so early on, still three races in. A quarter of our way through, actually, we can kind of throw our hats off to that. A quarter of the way through season four here, and going to your finishing point. Yeah, that's very important. As Random Serious and Soya Loco still was zero points to start this season. So um, first quarter hasn't gone their way, and the middle, the middle half of this season is really going to need to kind of improve for these guys if they're going to want to try and close the gap. Um, not looking too hot for those two drivers right now, but uh, we know Random Series has got it in him. Soyo Loco, of course, is a, a promotion from Division Two, so uh, yeah, some some things to prove for those drivers there, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean it's very early in the season to be thinking about relegation, but at zero points, you're not comfortable. You're definitely not comfortable. And Random Series, I would have expected, to be even a top five challenger. So yeah, he really needs to start finishing some races, and hopefully tonight. The beginning of the 104 for him. At, same for Soy Loco, even though uh, qualifying but did not bode well for the Aston Martin driver. No, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, quick shout out to Topher Tree, I think that's how you pronounce it, with the gifted sub to Yolmir. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. 
Um, and quickly we'll switch over to the Constructors Championship as uh, the drivers are just on their formation lap right now. Uh, it's Alpha Romeo leading the way, getting the better of their their parent team, I guess you can call them in a way. Uh, uncle team of Ferrari sitting at 539. What, what would you call it? Well, I mean, they're Italian, so Godfather, I guess. Yeah, oh, good, good, <laughs> good one. Well done, well done. Uh, Alpine sitting third, Red Bull fourth, Alpha Tori fifth. And the rest of the teams don't matter. Not good enough. That's one way of putting it, right? That's really one way of putting it. Not good enough is what how how I how I put it, my friend. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but quickly here, I guess we'll uh, or next week we're in Hungary, so we'll quickly pull up that uh, track map here. Uh, what's your th what's your take on Hungary? What I mean, it's obviously a very technical circuit with very minimal passing zone. Um, do you think uh, Matt Rosie has the fastest qualifying lap from last season? Do you think he, he might have to, you know, carry over some some hot uh, qualifying lap form from this race to next race? I mean, his form is is a fantastic thing on pole uh, there last season and uh, here, of course. Uh, you'd have to put him at least for a front row chance, but uh, it's a similar circuit, but you, you can never really tell. Yeah, but true. Another lap, it could be anyone. Yeah. I mean, that's why we race the race, hey? That's right. Otherwise, we just hand that points based on form. Yeah, exactly. Really well, then, well, no, we just always be winning because we're always on top form. This is true. This is, I mean, how many fastest laps have we set? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? Quickly to to have like a completely random note before this race starts, and I'll let you take it away. But let me get this in quick. I had a bowl of popcorn, a microwave bowl of popcorn, for the first time for probably like ten years today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I needed. Are going to go further into that? Yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Take all. it away. We have the lights here, and as Enrique would say, it's wife out, and away we go. Oh. Um. <laughs> Off the front row, it's Mystic with the better launch, unfortunately, for Matt Rosie. And down the inside comes the foreboding Alfa Romeo. Ooh. And around the outside goes Matt, though. Holds onto it, a better traction. And we saw this yesterday on the F2, that outside line, very much favourable. And uh, holding onto the lead stays Matt, which is fantastic for the spectacle. We don't really want to see Mystic flying off in the distance, as usual. Now, looking at the tyres, we've got mediums for Smith Cole. He's the first on that strategy. First on hard is Super Ninas in 18. So we'll keep an eye on those strategies as well. And now looking at the position change, it's plus four for Will Ans. He started in 11th, and those fresh socks have worked out a treat for him. He's now seventh in the Alpha Tauri. Losing out the most, unfortunately, is JC Blackley with three positions in the red. So Alpha Tauri, one going upwards, one going down. It's, it's... So I'm looking at it early on here, and Fredhead seems to be just sniffing the gearbox of Jin. He's been all over him through the, fir the first two sectors here. Jin's finally been able to open up a little bit of a gap here through these last couple of turns as Fred Head's missed a couple of apexes. But uh, maybe Fred Head could be showing a little bit better of a race pace here. Matt Rosie taking a quick fastest lap and then our leaderboard going to crap. So we'll see what happens from there. It says DRS is enabled. Did you get that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a myth, unfortunately. There's no DRS until next lap. But to your point, Fred Head putting the pressure absolute blow to it from the back of the Aston Martin. He's already dispatched a patch, of course, qualified ahead of him. So a great start from Fred. Yeah, brilliant start from uh, Will Ans though. He's uh, he's not showing any lack of pace at all, jumping up all these all these positions here. And looking at our predicted stop strategy, he's actually showing that the hards is the way to go out of the gate if you can. So maybe uh, Super Ninos might be on for a good strategy here. It's always hard to know. It will depend on any safety car deployments and uh, even virtual safety cars, which I would not bet against because that last turn, I mean, I lost the car, the rear of the car there a few weeks ago and crashed out. So I think if I can, <laughs> many people can if they haven't got the rear balance set up there properly. And there's even other turns that I would uh, suggest are quite dangerous as well in that middle sector. So I don't know. We've had some pretty high attrition so far this season, particularly in Brazil. So, uh, I don't know, you want to make a prediction how many cars will make it to the end of this race? And Willans gets very close to losing the rear at the corner. Right? Yeah, Yomir was catching him right down the straight there, nearly had him into turn one, but actually backed out of the move. Um, 
You know what? I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna do good here. I think. I'm only gonna say two. I think we're only gonna lose two guys here. Now uh, the optimistic crash. I like it. Yeah. Like For how much crap I talk in this league, I believe in these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, back to the uh, the front of the pack, and it's two tents separating Matt and Mystic. So pressure is on the Alpine, absolutely. There's DRS already uh, open back of the Alfa Romeo. There's a DRS train all the way down to fourth. Ash not quite holding on at the moment, but he's got Scuba Steve to worry about. And then there's a long train as well behind him, all the way down to 18th or 17th. Oh, no, yeah. so Super Nice brings it back within a second as well. So. A very long DRX train. Yeah. So Fred had taking fastest lap, but that is, um, so I'm trying to pull that up. That is so very close to the uh, the front of the the pack there. The next closest time is 500s away, so not too much between these guys. Uh, between the leader and all the way to 17th place is still within 10 seconds, so. Just shows how tight this pack has stayed close together through these first four laps. Now, it is still very early, but it uh, no one's getting kind of scared from how uh, how fast Zandwerk can be right now. Even the guys in the back of the pack. Ooh, there's a little bit of oversteer from Scuba Steve. Or sorry, from Fredhead there. Speaking of Scuba, he's uh, in six right now, kind of sitting behind Hash, and Hash is losing pace to the front pack there. So uh, Scuba kind of needs to get a, a move on here if he's gonna trying to continue that hot form here in Zandvoort, but just a massive DRS train though, oh my god, this is like playing an AI race. <laughs> As a bundle, it's like a video game crafty. As Scuba Steve Oh no! Completely. Impossible Bacon and spins out too. The wrong way and oh, oh, little yeah, clip. Oh no, no yeah. And yeah. finally collected by Soy Loco. He won't be scoring his first points of the season. He couldn't do anything. There's your quota of two already. Uh, Bacon oh is my. facing the right way. Oh, he's facing the right way. But that was so close to many more cars being out. He uh, had a face full, like a deer in the headlights. So he's very lucky to have escaped that. Into the pits for both Williams. So that's going to be stacking his Walker Bacon. Not the lap four you want. I need to see Save the... the yeah, I need to see the uh, the POV of uh, of Soyo Loco there, because it the way that that Scuba Steve and Impossible were spun around, it did not look like there was any gap for him to hit. He was gonna collect I mean, one of those guys. Yeah, these guys need to get in for a good stop so they can change their underwear, and that was some scary stuff. <laughs> yeah, many changes of underwear <laughs> in the back of the back of the pack there. Ah oh, man, it looked like there was three separate spins, but you have to you have to imagine that after the first one, the others saw it coming and they wanted to turn a bit more maybe, and that was enough to upset their their rear of their car. So uh, yeah, Bacon was lucky to not sustain uh, terminal damage himself because cars were avoiding both drivers. And I think some people avoided Bacon straight into Scuba Steve, and that's what happened before like. A lot of drivers into the pit here. Yeah, and Helga unfortunately speeding into the pit's a bit too exuberant. So they're all going for the hards. Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. It does make sense. Actually, Jin, Jin and Mystic to the mediums. Sorry, a Jin, Mystic, Fredhead, Will, Anz, Cake, Tiger, JC to the mediums. As well, Scavity and Impossible pitted just before. Okay, so. So Crash, here's what the hot take is here. Hard's very difficult to warm up. And a lot of drivers on this game try to avoid them at all costs because that is where the risk of spinning comes in more pressure. So yep. that might be the reason some people have chosen against them. Planning a two-stop, planning to be driving fast all the rest of the way. And that's, that's probably a good option, honestly. And to have come out, you said Mystic Pit, and he's P5 now. That's not too much of a loss of position, really. No, not at all. Same with Jin and Fredhead. They're still right there. Well, what no. that does do, though, is elevate Super Ninas. 11 positions from his starting point. Unfortunately, he was one of the drivers not eligible for the hardest charges, so 
at the moment Sui is that uh, holding that point. Yeah, so Sui and Super were actually the, the, the last two drivers on track, but um, with this safety car and unfortunately losing two drivers, they have absolutely launched up the order, both of them. That's right. That's right. So have we seen the um, outright lap record beaten already? Yes, Smith Cole uh, picks um, the next lap, which is uh, I, not a great choice. I didn't catch the qualifying, but the qualifying is the 1.0 or 1.08. 0.818, so we didn't touch that today. No, we did not. Uh, but the, uh, lap record? the lap record right now is Fredhead, or Fredhead has the fastest lap with a yeah, 1.2, uh, 111, 230. Okay, so we yet to beat that. I believe that's held by OP Magic. It's actually impossible bacon. What? He's got the fastest lap for the race record. OP Magic has the fastest qualifying. Oh, the qualifying. Oh, qualifying. Yeah, OP Magic. Yeah, well, Jesus. Legendary competitor in his own right. I've uh, for many years. He's an Australian, by the way. Oh. And he's uh, got to get a lot of credit for the reason I was able to work with all those ideas in season two. As we get a spinner, Will Ands is spun out there on the safety car. Very unfortunate. Yeah, as I was saying, OP Magic was uh, helping me practice. His setup's really a like, push on. Uh -huh. Season 2, so credit goes to him. Okay, alright. Shout out Will OP. Will recovering though, down there in 18th after a spin on the safety car. You can't be doing that. No. Possible bacon. That hurts. Especially after such a good start from Will, too. Oh. Fredhead. Spun out. Fredhead. Fredhead's in the wall, yeah. Warming up his tyres and he's found himself perpendicular to the track, which is not an angle that is ideal. And at a terrible time to do so. Looks like Matt Rosie backs up the pack a little bit and then launches it right at the end of the turn. Jin does not get a good jump. Super gets a great jump on Jin, but Jin should be able to outbreak him here into turn one. A little bit of oh. contact as these two were going at it a little bit yesterday in F2. Suwi sees the gap and takes it through turn one. And Cake Thomas is just in behind these two drivers on the hards as well, so he wants to try and get around him. He's going to go deep into turn three, but can't get a good enough launch to overtake. Jin still a second off the pace from the lead pack here. Mystic is able to close down to Yolmir, but very tight area where we're at right now through sector two, so nothing going quite yet for Mystic. Gives Jin a little bit of time to make up the ground. Cake still hounding the drivers ahead. And we had a yellow flag. Is that Willands again? It looks like it, yeah. Around turn seven. So Yomi are not quite able to pick up the last few apexes as his teammate spins out. Random yeah. Sirius needs the points and uh, falls back to 17th. So Mystic applying the pressure to McLaren is currently P3. Yeah, Yomi are really struggling with uh, turning in. Ooh, we... who is that? That was a, I think that was a Red Bull. Someone nearly lost it around turn turn 11. They got really high up onto that curb. Very easy to do. Any curb is really really throw you. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if you'll see that. And Mystic goes very wide through turn 3. It covers it though. It's a viable line actually. We see someone off a Tarzan. I believe that is Fredhead. Not having the greatest last few laps. Covering now. No, he's, it's it's really tough now because you're really shook from how good you were doing out of the gate to kind of what you've done as of late. Cake Thomas just gets super neat ass now, so he gets one of those drivers on the hards. But going back to that Fred had thought, he, it's really tough to try and settle yourself now and just kind of a little bit of a gap ahead might help him get into a groove, but still got to settle his nerves as a major gap. The real issue you've got there is once you've lost it, once the tires heat up, and there's just not enough straight to cool them down at this track. So you just yeah. find yourself in a horrible cycle of hitting the even further and then losing more grip and perhaps spinning again and they get hotter. And it's just a never ending cycle of doom. That's Talking true. of doom, if you're looking backwards from Yomir, you're looking at a face full of Alfa Romeo, which is not with DRS currently, but if it had had DRS, it would have been a good bye and good night as Will Ands is off again. He needs to be careful he doesn't fall a lap down here in the case of the safety car which he can recover that. Mm. Not looking good for the British man. 
Mystic looking for alternate lines in the order to overtake Yomir, not quite happening so far. But eventually these tyres will really come in and we'll find Yomir struggling as he goes a little bit wide there. Absolute blowtorch being applied to his gearbox. Those without racing line will be happy to see that the braking boys Ooh, are still in Here we go, Mystic down, down the, the inside. inside. Goes for the pounce. You don't want to be on that curb though, there'll be no traction whatsoever. No, a little... Yomir plays it smart, gives it enough room. Uh, maintains that position. We've got further yellow flags. Tiak. Is that? Yeah. Tiak. Yeah. One thing saving Yolmir for sure is him getting uh, the slipstream from uh, Hash up ahead. He needs to be sure to keep that gap tight enough and hope that Mystic. Uh, and I think, yeah, he's going to be able to stay in third once again. Jin is just barely off the pace. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Mystic knows all about having two cars in front of him at Zandvoort, one getting DRS from the other. Uh, yeah. but, oh, oh, we've no, lost Impossible. And that's at the last turn, and he's accompanied, I believe, by... Well, someone was also There's... off. JC Blackley was involved, yeah. but not out of the race. We might see uh, Tiat go past the wreckage if we uh, stay on board with the Ferrari. We've got yellow flags, but currently no VSC or full safety car. Yeah, it's just before the pit entry there. It looks like the front left is at a horrible angle. Uh, unless you're performing some drifting. Oh, here we go. Now, Ooh, Lance is also being This car is off in the first set of turn four. So once again, Tiak is... Oh, no, he's off. Yeah, Mystic can't get by Yolmir right now. Matt Rose, he's just gotten that gap up over a second to hash as well so this is the time to try and start growing it especially with mystic stuck in behind but of course mystic does have a pit to matt rosie still on those uh softs that he started the race on so two of the three british drivers out of the race Jin holding it down for that, that uh, country and he's currently running p5 as we mentioned right behind mystic who's trying to work his way past yomir still of course, very difficult to affect the maneuver, especially when the car in front has the arrows to protect the position. So Having said that, he's draped all over Yomir like a jacket, and is actually now side by side. Can Yomir do anything to defend himself? I doubt it. And through goes the championship lead. Important for Jin to try and pick off Yomir here quick as well. We'll see. He's I stuck. find it difficult to defend as well with uh, no DRS. Yeah, true. Jin's got to hope these guys pit real soon. Now, with the safety car on the softs, do you think that how many how many more laps do you think they can get out of it? Well, tough to uh, tough to say exactly, but I would think soon, which is the idea, as Yomir actually proves that point into the pits at the end of lap twelve. Okay, so, so it leaves him with 24 laps to go, and he's going to put on the hard tire. So if they want to go to the medium, perhaps maybe three or four more laps. So, where does Yolmir come out? So in 12th, I'll have to see how much of a undercut will will come here. Is Mystic looking at the inside and just can't get it on Hash. Now this is very important for Hash as well, holding up the one man ahead of him in the Drivers' Championship. Well, they are on different strategies though, so yeah, it'll be tough for Hash. Oh, mm. there is an absolute beauty of a video in the uh, in the Discord of the return of Scuba Steve. Exactly the view I. Cars are coming at him right at once, facing the other direction. Very scary stuff. Ooh. A new strategy is available on the MFT. Oh, an impossible too. Oh. The so Mystic is now released in the P2. Can he do anything about the gap to Matt Rosie, who's yet to pit? And will Mystic indeed make to make a second pit stop himself? I think he will. That's my 
I yeah, imagine with how many people have been choosing the hards over the mediums here, I, I'd imagine that he will. That being said, though, Mystic will have better tire uh, life and uh, even rubber, in fact, for the entire race. So that 1.6 seconds that currently separates the two drivers will come down, you would imagine, unless Mystic has some issues himself. Fred has done a really good job working himself back up into this race, though. He's about to get Sui now for ninth place. And he's going to have to send it around the outside. Sui goes up and over the curb, but Fred has got the tire advantage as well as the pace and takes the position. Jin looking to get Hash down the pit straight. He's going to want to try and dive down the inside line. Hash going a little deep, but not enough opening for Jin there. No real gap either. Jin's got to try and do it somewhere else, but Mystic hasn't really driven too far up the road here, so Hash is keeping actually some pretty good pace with uh, with Mystic ahead, having nothing but clean air ahead, and uh, still staying with the championship driver right now, or the championship leader right now. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when you have two DRS stones separated by half the track, roughly, it does help in staying with people. Oh, here we go with Jin. Jin has the advantage, steams down the inside of Hash. Ash tries to make an over and under with him. Don't think he'll be able to do that. The tires are better on the Aston Martin. That was going to be DRS though, and it's quite back. Mystic is going to knock down the road. But Jim has the better braking capacity and maintains P3. There's a little bit of contact there between the drivers, but nothing uh, nothing too much there. Just, just a little bit of a, a broadcaster's note, I guess, if no one saw that. They made contact, but nothing happened from it, so... We continue the on. Pits comes hash. So, Ferrari need to make a stop here for their lead driver. Where will he come out? Will it be around Yolmir? You have to imagine Yolmir would undercut, but he is potentially in traffic. So, maybe not. The tyres chosen for hash are mediums. So, that was about three laps difference. Ooh, hash. Around the outside, here comes the McLaren, though. Oh, a bit of white line action there with the uh, hash. Perfect for him. Comes out in front of him. And on the Line mediums as well. Up. That's right, yes. Like you said. Medium. Sorry, I had to. And make there's that point the lead again. change, which we weren't watching. Mystic takes it. Already past Matt Rosen. His tyres will be crying enough, and I imagine he'll be coming in this lap for some mediums, which may see him unnick up Mystic, but the traffic might be an issue for the Alpine. And that could be the, uh, the difference between winning and losing this race, just where the traffic is and if it holds him up. See, now this is where you really need a, a, a crew chief uh, for to kind of help Jin on the strategy here, because now Mystic is, what is he, about a second and a half, two seconds up the road now. Now you really need to try and line up the perfect time for an undercut here, because like we were talking before, these, these mediums aren't going to last the race. At least they shouldn't. If you, if they make it, then then that's just a strategy that I can't even picture. But uh -huh. so this has worked out really well, for Misty, because look who's right in front of Matt Rosie. It's the teammate and brother. They'll be probably communicating. Uh, okay. I have no proof of that. He'll just if be are, no. He'll just yell down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold up I mean, the LP. In the same household. <laughs> Hold up the Alpine behind you! Okay! <laughs> That's how they discuss. <laughs> oh, good. Are we still going on for ice like cream it. after? Oh, heck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a longer string between these two cups, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Matt Rosie needs to make a move uh, on this DRS straight, otherwise he'll be very much compromised. We not running at the pace of his teammate. And this could really help Mystic Joker in uh, making sure that there's no undercut from the Alpine. There's a defensive maneuver from Swee, but it might not be enough. It's so powerful that DRS around the outside. Nice breaking point there for the Alpine. And through goes Matt Rosie. I mean, you have been saying people going deep in the turn one track, mm -hmm. just for their end today. But really, it's actually the racing line. You don't really want to be that tight to the curb because if you touch the curb, you're all of a sudden facing the wrong way. And the banking just makes it so 
you don't have to apex the corner to be the fastest line. So around the outside is actually quicker. Yeah, I mean it's it it seems to be the way to go. You you you're kind of I mean you're not always driven to just uh to take the inside line away when you have the chance on, on the defense, but I mean seeing I have seen the the inside line come into on the positive ending of the defensive side than taking the outside line as well. So True. you just have to have your dose in front, no matter what. Yeah, this, the, those first Rude couple turns. With a very robust maneuver there on Sweet. Had to make it work though. Had the DRS into that chicane sort of thing. Very nice move. Here we go, Fredhead lining up. Helg and potentially even Super Ninas, but oh no, he looks like he's going to get blocked here. It's actually going to be Helg down the inside line on Super. As Super tries to send it deep, and it nearly some contact. Fredhead can get a really good run out of turn two, and Super Ninas going wide, and Fredhead is able to overtake his teammate, trying to hold up Helg as much as possible with Super there, and still on the same tires that he started this race on. And Fredhead's done a really good job of kind of... Uh, Regaining his head after a couple of uh, unfortunate spins there under his own doing and finds himself back up into sixth and right behind Helg, who's actually Helg's worked himself into a pretty solid race here as well. Yeah, and he's absolutely. on the hard he's on the hards as well as Helg, so he could probably think I don't uh, I you know, I'm gonna say he can probably go the rest of this race, so no safety cars and Helg is in a really good spot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's have a look at the stops made. So everyone but Super Ninas and Sui have made their compulsory pit stops. So even Scabney, who's up in P4 with nine places gained, he's, uh, he's really come out of nowhere. Let's have a look what tyres he's on. We'll have to make another pit stop though. I think he put it on the safety car. Yeah, he did with that uh, calamity that we saw. He's now on mediums. So it will be tough, but he's in clean air, which always will help around this track. So Fredhead did get the move on Helg. Helg kind of pulled off to the side, kind of understanding that was that wasn't his race. Fredhead's obviously got the pace right now, and now Super Ninas could potentially be in a little bit of a DRS train on Helg. If maybe Helg can catch back up to Fredhead, and Fredhead's already closed the gap to Scavney up ahead. What's Scavney on? Scavney's actually on the mediums as well. Another bit on that picks up on lap four in the safety car. So I believe. Gavney will definitely get stopped. I'm watching the gap between the leader and Matt Rose because that's where the end cut is uh, potentially going to happen. 16.8, just a figure to remember for the next few laps before Mystic presumably makes a pit stop onto Soft, you would have to imagine. Mm -hmm. Going for that fastest lap as well. But up front, it's actually Jin who's cutting into the lead. It was 1.9, then it went up to about 3 seconds. Now it's down to 2.2. So uh, I wonder if there's some charging of the battery going on there for one of them. At different times, perhaps. We'll have to see. Yomir gets Sui into turn 1 here. Yep, I've got a little bit of glitch. Yep, same. A little strange order. All over the place, really. Fredhead actually makes a move on Scabney as well. So, uh, flying through the field is Fredhead in his harness. Yeah, we'll have to kind of keep an eye on how much that gap to the leader closes. Is that 13.5? Then we'll have to we'll have to take, take a peek in a couple of laps where it's at. I mean, Fredhead's been in the same lap. All of the top four. Top, top five even are on mediums that came on around the, the uh, safety car period. So you have to imagine every single one of them will have to pit again. Elg is actually net leader, but he probably will fall outside of a pit stop range by the time Mystic makes a pit stop. I mean, we'll see. If he if Scavney can hold the DRS train to Fredhead and Hell can do that to Scavney, then Fredhead's obviously just going to pierce a a gap through the air and maybe Helgen and Scavney can just take advantage and hold on through the straights. It could be very beneficial to Helg. Yes, yeah, so this is actually going to be quite close. Like, uh, Matt Rosen needs to make the move on Super Ninas as soon as he can. And if he can do that, we're looking at the challenges for the race lead being Mystic, 
Matt, Jean, and Help. Although Help has a penalty, so that might be up there with it's a five second penalty. That may be one of those ones that can be removed though, so you never know. Yeah, very true. We don't know what it was for. I didn't. I wasn't able to catch that. Actually, I'm gonna. Gavney will have one to serve though, because I believe he needs to take out this stop. Unfortunate for the Williams driver, the sole remaining Williams driver, of course. That's the demise of Impossible Bacon. Super Ninas though, with not the greatest run onto the main straight, will be at severe risk of losing his P7. Doesn't even bother to defend. Probably wise in this scenario. 22 lap old cards versus five lap old mediums on the pole sitter. Doesn't get more, much more clear cut than that. Into seventh goes in that road. So Super should be lining a, uh, a move onto some softs very soon here, as well as Sui. We did see the they pit they pitted around lap 12, 13. So that's coming up here. That's right. That's right. So um, softs, yeah, would seem the, the best choice for those two gentlemen. And I'd imagine that within the next lap or two is the best time. So Fredhead's just holding that gap to Mystic right now at around 13 and a half seconds. Scavney just falling out of DRS, but with the DRS that he was just got actually brings himself back within the range. He's really close here. If he's going to lose or not, and random serious spin out there, or does he just lose a position to TH? Did not catch it, but he's certainly right behind TH, so if he did oh, spin... Oh, and TH spins. Well. spins. Ferrari and McLaren not having the greatest race for those two gentlemen. No, um, not at all. And their teammates in 9th and 10th. And Although they are going to the end, they have some positions to gain. Yellow flags uh, were probably for TH actually there. A bit late on those flags, I think. Quite odd. So we're going to see a whole heck of a lot of drivers coming into the pits here real soon for some softs. That's right. Top 5, all of them held. Probably can make the end, but not necessarily. Super Ninas will uh, join those guys going to Sox as in the Sui. Uh, maybe even Random Sirius as well. 14 lap old mediums there, I think. So Matt Rosie's at 17.8 around there behind Mystic. Do, do you remember what you said he was at earlier? Yeah, it was 16.8. So unfortunately, the, uh, the gap is going the wrong way for Matt in this phase where he should be quicker. So it looks like Mystic has this fairly under control. Even if he comes out behind, he'll have such a massive pace advantage on those socks that it should be a foregone conclusion. And we we don't even know that they actually have to fit. It may be the case that we're underestimating the longevity of the medium. They, they might all go for that. So this just kind of, uh, I just saw Helg has actually just set his fastest lap on 18 lap old hards. So he's uh the DRS train that him and Scavney are getting from Fredhead is massive for him to to kind of keep pace is, and he's actually even up on his initial first sector time. So he's putting in some really solid laps and oh a little bit on the grass. Oh mm -hmm. my God, commentators curse. Oh and Super Ninas. Oh. Direction. Time to come in and change those tires, my friend. That is unfortunate though. Oh, he's run over his own. Oh no, it was a DR, it was a, it was a ball. I thought he ran over his own front wing, which would be quite easy. But, yeah, that's not worked out for him. Did so well here yesterday. Now, down in 13th, needs to make a good stop. Oh. He's sick there with the fastest up on his 19 lap old mediums. So, I mean, they're still pacing the tyres. Whether they have tread, though, is a different question. Remember, on F1 2020, you could set your fastest lap on cards that were 24 laps old at Spain. Yeah. Last lap kind of thing. So I feel like Spain is like a very broken track. track. Depending on the compound as well, because yeah. you, it's actually hidden what compound these are. You have C1 through to C5, and they're labeled different things depending on which one uh, selected by Pirelli to come to the track. So it's, it's actually hard to tell. Into the pits for both gentlemen that started on cards. Sweet and Super. We've got some very strange glitching going on for Super though, as he now appears out of the pit lane. That's my favorite glitch on this game, by the way. It looks hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is not right. He's now blocking random serious. I'm like, I know he's going backwards in the pit lane. Oh, I love it. 
Oh I my, know. yeah, I can see it on the track map. Oh, he seems to be actually exiting it now. Yeah. Entered in 13th, comes out in 12th. Yeah, my leaderboard is absolutely bang on with that, surely. <laughs> Let's see who's going to be the first to blink into the pit. Who needs to actually pit, too? Well, the answer is not help. He was going towards the pit lane, but it was just a defensive maneuver. Matt Rosie is flying up behind him. Sends it around the outside at Tarzan. And, oh. Uh, oh. He's still there. Down Very the inside. Nice Clean racing by both drivers there, yeah. Good, good, good. Makes up another position, but still falling back time-wise to the leader. And this is what I meant by traffic being in the way of that strategy. It's just not working out. I think Mystic has this under control, as we speak. The fact, the fight of the second, though, is definitely on. Jin is falling back from Mystic last week's winner, not able to keep up this time. So, will it be second or third for Jin? I feel like they should have committed to a pit stop now, though. There's only nine laps left in this race. Well, that's why I think there's a potential that they might not actually need to. No, I, at this no, I'm, they, exactly. I, at this point, I think that their their tires are good enough. They're not they're not even gonna pit. None of them. Yeah, I can see that. So that that begs the question: Can Matt Rosie challenge the likes of Scammy and Fredhead before the race is up, and even Kate Thomas, who's snuck into P3? And if that is the case, with the longevity of the medium. He's actually in a pretty safe P3 town. Yeah, us. Uh, I mean... Matt, about flying under the radar, that Red Bull. Yeah, he has, we, have, we haven't mentioned his and name at all. Look, he's moved up four positions, so he qualified quite well, P7. And uh, has just driven a clean race, basically, with not much to talk about. Yeah, we'll have a monocle usual, please. <laughs> That's right, Monaco podium of the last two seasons. We've got a yellow flag, there's a blue dot. I, yeah, it's a Red Bull, it's Tiger Nascar. Currently running P11, recovering his car. N not too bad of a showing from Tiger. That's a that's a respectable midfield pace right now, but he's got Suey behind him on some fresh soft, so Suey should be able to catch him. Yeah, you don't want to be pushing too hard on gravel-ridden cards after you've made an error, and he'll have to uh, sort of be a bit patient, wait for them to come back to him, maybe make a good stop if he needs to. And we've seen a move there, though, and, oh, Scandley tries to come back at Matt Rosie. Can't quite make it work. He's got help to worry about now. It was a blue-on-blue -blue homicide. Matt Rosie jumping up into fifth ahead of Scandley. Oh, they survived. Uh, well, I mean... Maybe assault. Yeah. We've Assault got, uh, attempted. Yellow flags. There's a McLaren. I think that might have been Brendan letting the leader pass with blue flags. Not what you want to see from a guy who's been on the podium a few times in the past. Uh, he shouldn't be up down. He's he's a lot better. It's just really unfortunate. But he is still in the race and he needs the points. He's not scored any yet. And we've got JC Blackley uh, surrendering his position to make the series by facing the wrong way. The podium a couple of weeks ago, not the result he's going to be after here. P16 currently a lap down for JC Blackley. He's still on the game though because his mum has not yet noticed that he's gone. So now I'm looking at the battle between Scavney and Helg. This actually could get pretty good. Scavney's on 23 lap old mediums. Helg for sure has the confidence that his tires are going to finish this race. I wonder how bad those mediums are for Scavney right now. And that DRS train to Matt Rosie is probably saving him a little bit. Very true. And there's also five second penalties being applied to both of these gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, of course, they could be reviewed by the stewards, but that is an even fight, uh, as it appears. I, mean. I checked Halg's and his is speeding in pit lane, so that won't be coming off. That's right. So, did we check Scavney's? No, I didn't have a chance to check Scavney. From memory, that was a uh, CD collision. Tiger NASCAR right, and Smith Pell really battling it out. See what Tiger can do here up in Division 1. Who gives the respect to Smith Pell and Smith taking the position up into 10th now? Or no, Tiger, sorry, was actually coming at Smith Pell, I believe. So, yeah, Smith Pell 
holding on to 10th, and just behind them is Su Wee, and Random Sirius. Oh my god, just misses out on the Midwest fastest lap by nine thousandths of a second. Oh dear. So close. So close. Impossible just barely holds on to that. JC Blackley letting some more drivers through. And I was kind of okay, expecting... Matt Rosen, Go three ahead. and a half seconds back of Predicate. Is there opportunity there for the Pulse to to close down and have a go at P4? Do you think correct? I don't think so, because I've been looking at Matt Rosen. He hasn't been closing down that gap much at all from the point that he got ahead of Scavney. So Fredhead, despite having an error on this set of tyres, uh, has just recovered beautifully. And you have to imagine he would have been on for a, a strong showing without that mistake, maybe even a P2. Oh, yeah, only three seconds back of Cake Thomas in third was spinning out as well. And then, I mean, how much time did he really lose? I, it's, it's hard to say, of course. But... Yeah, for sure, I agree. I think P2 is really there for Fredhead. And maybe, who knows, if he got ahead of Mystic Joker at one point, maybe even P1 could have been a little bit more of a battle. Of course, I believe that the gentleman still has an injury from a couple of weeks ago to his hand. Oh, yes. Actually, I mean, from an in-game collision somehow. So, uh, we don't know how that's still affecting him. It seemed to be not a problem for him in previous weeks, but any sort of pain is the way someone come into it, especially when you're not really concentrating on a safety car, so maybe that's sort of this speculation that we don't actually I'm really intrigued by this Helg versus Scavney battle now, because uh, it just the longer this, the longer Scavney holds off Helg, or the more laps that, the more turns that get onto these tires, these 26 lap old mediums, the older they're just going to feel, right? And Scavney, I don't know how much he'll be able to fight Helg on a defense, maybe getting nervous about how much tire he has left on these mediums. And like and it's I also key for the hardest charger point because uh, Scavney currently leads that with seven positions gained, and there's three drivers further back with six positions gained, albeit one. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, True. And but I... there is a driver within five seconds as well of, uh, of Scavney's position, so there's four drives on plus six currently. Yeah. Yeah, good point. I mean, Tiger and Sui would, would end up tying for the hardest charger in the end, really. That's right. Although it Scavney's penalty, I believe, he'll be able to overturn if he has the footage based on what it's for. It's the severe collision on lap four involving Bacon, involving Super Steve, so like a low gentleman. Oh, okay. So he might get that back, yeah. True. But if we want to have a look at another battle, there's a gap diminishing for P3 between Cake and Fredhead. Only four laps remaining for Fred to make that maneuver. It's thick, but it is going in his direction, that gap. He's really kicked it into gear here, because for a couple laps there, that gap was staying at the same. And now, yeah, like you said, he's completely taken off two seconds from it through just two or three laps now, so... Finding a little bit of late race pace is Fredhead. But both of them are on very old mediums. And if there's any action between those two, maybe Matt Rosie can sneak in there if there's a bit too many fireworks. But that's always the thing you hope for when you're a bit further behind. You see two cars getting a bit closer together, and at least for go. You know, it's, yeah. it's Division 1 here. These guys are not going to crash into each other that no. often, so... At least they shouldn't. Probably wish the thinking. Yeah. looking for alternate lines here through turn four. Scavney really starting to struggle with traction on those very old mediums. They've been on for how many laps now? 28. 28. That's massive. Yeah, we went over one lap earlier than everyone else because he got into the pits. I want to say the car was called straight away. Oh, that's just 28 laps on a 50% race. On I mean, it's going to be 31 by the end of it. Yeah, potentially. We don't know. There could be a puncture in the cards here. I mean, they could pop. You're right. 
Oh, it just looks like Scavney's got that advantage around turn 12 here on Helg. Helg's really got to try and close the gap coming around 13 or 14 or else, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. And let's not count Hash out as well. And, oh, here we go. It's not come off straight away, but Freddy is on the gearbox of Cake's Red Bull. We've got yellow flags for the other Red Bull. Flag and Ascar losing out to Sui, which is important for the hardest charger. Sui now uh, with plus seven. Looking back at this battle. Scavney and Helg still tied together, as are now at third and fourth, Cape and Fred. Two man, left, one and a half left. I really need to know what is left in these tires, man. This is killing me. <laughs> I just like because I who's got who's got the more confidence? Like who who hasn't who feels like they have enough tire left to to really go for it? Well, it definitely looks like it's Fred head because, uh, yeah. He's all over the back of Cape. He's going to have DRS on the, uh, the front straight. Mystic is starting the last lap. Look at that. Sets the fast uh, lap. Is that the new lap record? No, no. Three, three thousandths of a second off. Well, they keep shipping away. they got one more lap in order to make it work. There's a bit of a loss of the rear grip there for Fred Head's Haas. He's got the outside line. He's got the nose in front. Cape goes for the outbreaking manoeuvre. There's no contact yet. Fred oh. slips around the outside. Has to take the curb. If you can hold it around here, he has the inside line into three. And it looks like yet. Yeah. It's a fantastic move by Fred. Gets it done. Didn't give Cape the, uh, the room to make any you know, alternate lines work. Ooh. And uh, Cape tried everything he could. He's going to try it. Oh, he comes oh, back. Oh, my goodness. Any contact there would have seen Cape probably facing the incorrect direction. Uh, someone else is actually. Look Super Ninas. Losing a, 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 there. a late spot there. I think Fred has done it now. He's signed the gap, uh, Cake, and that's a final lap loss of the podium for Cake Heartbreak. That's still a great number of points for the gentleman. As Super Nina struggles to continue facing the correct direction. Brandon Sirius picking up a couple more points there as he goes past. But the day belongs to Mystic Joker coming over the line for his win. Not from beginning to end, but pretty damn close. Ha Hash actually getting a position on Helg at the death here, and my game crashes out, so keep. You gotta, you gotta get oh, your radio no. going. Yeah, so Jim finishes the race eight seconds arrear of Mystic. It's Fredhead on the podium after that late move on Cape. We've got a dash line here between Ash and Helg where it finishes in Hash's favor. Both of them um, finishing in the top eight there. Hash actually picks up six after Scavenny's penalty, but I believe Scavenny will have that re removed if he has it sent it to the stewards. Cape Thomas in fourth. Matt Rosie fell back to 18 seconds behind Mystic. So that pace was really in the Alfa Romeo there, as we saw that fast lap towards the end. Matt Rosie only fifth after being on the front row of the grid. It's uh, ninth for Yol Mir, fairly quiet race for that McLaren. Smith Cull running at the top 10. With Sui in 11th place. Tiger Nazcar just finishes the race now in 12th. Tiat will be the last across the line for Ferrari in 13th. With 14th through 16th. At least one lap down. And that's the end of the race. We're back watching Division 1, Crash and I, and we're back watching Mystic win the race. We've got another Alfa Romeo there with driver of the day, Sui. So all the bonus points going to that team as well. The Alfa Romeo looking very much commanding in the Constructors' Championship at this stage. Yeah, that's a Great big... podium, of course, for Jin once again. Backs up his win last week with a nice second place. And Fred Head continues to score podiums. I believe that's 100% speak for him since he joined. Okay, so... I'm just looking at the race results here that was sent to me. And, yeah. I, I'm, it, I'm still... I still don't know, but yeah, great, great race. It was honestly a great race. Tough, tough luck for uh, Cake Thomas there losing out in the bitter death. But Fred... Fred had what a what a race by him. You're coming all the way back uh, to podium. It's yeah. Hats off to you, Fred Head. Uh, who do you want to get in for our, our fourth guy for the interview? Well, we had the hardest charger with Swee. We had Cake flying under the radar. A lot of a lot of great drivers here. I'll leave it up to you. Oh. Um. Mm. You know, we haven't heard from Matt Rosie yet this year. 
I want to hear his. I was his... going to say Matt would be a good shout because that he was a lead guy on that strategy. We'll we'll see. I'd like to I'd like to hear from that that uh, that Easterner. Yeah, that was uh that didn't that didn't go the way that I anticipated it to go. And yes, Bacon, you did keep fastest lap by the skin of your teeth. Oh my goodness. It, you probably leaned your head forward in the car and that's what got you that extra little three thousandths of a second. Just barely. But yeah. Bacon's name is still on the on the Midwest history books as of right now. We'll see how long that lasts though, okay Bacon, so don't get cocky. Hmm, let me get the interviews here. I think that might be the first uh, lap record that stays from F1 2020, which is kind of an interesting point. The cars are supposedly to be faster this game, but not panning out that way despite being in dry conditions. Yeah, true. Uh, we've got in the chat here, we've got <laughs> Super Nino saying that race aged him for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> and at Rosie. Okay, we're just waiting for Fredhead. Uh, I'm up for interviews. Join in. Okay, there we go. We got it. Okay, cool. You got your, you ready? You got everything sorted? Ready to ask questions? Yeah. Okay, we'll drag them in. Unless you steal my question. Well, we'll see. I'm really good at stealing your question here. Sure. But anywho, yes. Here we go. We've got on your screen, you can, oh, later, Matt Rosie. Uh, one second. Matt, quickly before you leave. If you need to jump out, I, I have to drag you back in, so DM me if you have to jump out. Okay, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I just did it by accident. Oh, for Christ's sakes. All right, whatever. Now I'm, now I'm tilted. Um, anywho, I'll try, and, I'll try and refocus. Whatever. Okay, so we got our podium here with Mystic Joker, Janet to win it, Fred Head, and our guy that we just wanted to bring here, Matt Rosie, because we wanted to hear what happened to his race. But anywho, we'll start with our winner... Uh, and the man that can't win without us, as it seems, and we expect half of the prize money, or actually, no, two-thirds of the prize money to be taken off of your check, one-third to be given to me, one-third to be given to Jacko, as we are Toto to your Lewis Hamilton, as it seems. So congratulations to you, Mystic Joker. Now, how old were your mediums, man? Uh, they were 60%. That's it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they felt really good. They felt really, really good. Uh, there was, you know, um, when Random was behind me, uh, I kind of pushed for a bit. He got fast as slapping, so that kind of, like, pushed me to <laughs> to go for it. Uh, I got close, but my last sector was kind of meh. And then, so I kind of saved up ERS again and, and went for it towards the, uh, towards the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, I've... I've I was talking to Jack the whole time. I'd say I wanted to know what these guys' tires were, but I mean, I guess they weren't as bad as I thought. That's crazy. Um, now, you qualified. And you got out qualified by Matt there. How much did you leave on the table? Uh, I just couldn't hook up a lap. Unfortunately, um, this is one of those tracks in, in quality where uh, you know it's kind of hit or miss for me. I was like three tenths off of what I did in another league. Um, not too long ago around here, 
pretty sure I did like a 9-2, I, I think. Uh, something like that. But yeah, uh, I changed up a couple things in my setup to feel a little bit better in the race, especially tire wear wise. Um, which obviously, uh, you know, showed and, and helped out massively. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know if I would have been able to have gotten close to Matt. Matt did uh, one hell of a lap for sure. Yeah, I'll say so. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, well done, Matt. But we'll get to you after, so whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, I I'm blanking right now, Jack. Are you got anything? Well, I mean, uh, it was another another mystic showcase, really, wasn't it? The correct strategy, the pace, the pace to match by the end of the race. And the question on my mind is actually not to do with this race itself, Mystic, but a few weeks ago you announced that you'd be retiring after this season, and uh, I was wondering why that would be. Um, I just don't know if I will have the time to commit to league racing. Um, things pretty much like when this current season wraps up, uh, I'm going to have some other stuff going on and whatnot, so I'm not sure I'd be able to kind of, you know, c commit to it. I mean, yeah, sure, I, I, I could still race and whatnot, but, you know, I wouldn't be able to be, like, given the performances that I am right now, and to be honest, I don't really know if I would like to do that, because if I do something uh, like this, I kind of want to give it my all, uh, instead of just kind of half-assing it. Well, so, we just half-assed the league, so it's whatever. We're just, we're just no, I had to make a joke. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense to me. It's the same decision I can. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And um, will you be sticking around in the paddock? You know, perhaps you yeah. might have a go at commentary yourself. Oh. <laughs> uh, possibly. You know, you never know. Maybe, maybe that's that's uh something on the on the table that can be talked about. Uh, Trust me, I don't there. practice at all. <laughs> but yeah i mean uh you know it's definitely not gonna be like a permanent goodbye uh i'll definitely stick around and you know um uh, hang out with this community i mean these guys here at uh, midwest you know i've built up a, a great community um lots of talent here uh you know some some fun times funny conversations so it definitely won't be you know just disappearing and and you know dropping off the face of the earth but, uh, yeah, it's hopefully uh, end strong here, but uh, you never know. Anything can happen. Fair enough. Very good. And well done once again. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And also, this win, uh, I want to dedicate it to Space Man. Um, you know, so I know a lot of people were rocking green helmets. Uh, and, yeah, so this one, this one's for you, Space Man. Well done. Solid Very shout classy. out. I'm sorry, I appreciate it. Um, you'll be not happy to hear though, is Jacko and I won't be casting next week. At least I won't be. I'm uh, unfortunately having to take my break week. I don't know what, I, surprise Jacko, I, I won't be here next week. So I don't know what you'll oh. be doing. Uh, maybe you can go, maybe you can go co-cast with Hotspot there because he'll be taking division one. So we'll see if the, uh, okay. we'll yeah. Yeah. So, any yeah, you might I might just be the curse or Jacko might be the curse. So you'll you'll have to see next week at Hungry Mystic. Oh, it's a scientific experiment. Exactly. Exactly. But you yeah. Know, surprisingly, Hungary and and this track in Canada have been like my three weakest tracks that I've just yeah um not felt that uh I'm at my best or can perform at my best. But uh, somehow, some way. Finally kind of figured out the formula for success around here today, but yeah, uh, Monday I actually did a race around Hungary, and even though I really disliked that track, uh, it went a lot better compared to uh, how previous races there for me have gone um, in the last game, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, something to, something to keep our eye out for, but yeah, well done. Well done on another win here. Uh, you're welcome for showing up, so you didn't say thanks, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, uh, Jin's having problems with this channel, so I'm just going to switch over to waiting room and see if he can hear me quickly. One second. Jin? Hello, Jin? No. Okay. We'll... Alright, we're in, we're in waiting room now, guys. Okay, 
Jin couldn't hear anyone in broadcast channel for whatever reason, so we'll uh, we'll do his interview here. Um, but yeah, Jin, I don't. Did you hear anything that was said? No. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, but yeah, second place for you. Um, you now I've got a, my quick question here to start is you set a pretty damn good time on mediums in your first uh, out lap or hot lap in qualifying. And then it seems that you struggled on your two soft laps after. What went through those? Those uh, I know one you spun out actually, but what went wrong in your last one there? Well, just, just didn't seem to feel. I felt like the medium lap was a lot better than my soft. So I felt like I had more grip on the mediums. Weird. That's what it felt like. Yeah, yeah, very weird. So someone spray painted your tires, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. What a mystic. I yeah, mystic don't say anything. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, well, put in, put in a, put in a steward report and I'll try and come down on him. We'll take this one away from him. Nice one. Okay, good. Nice one. Yeah, there we go. That's the one way we can nerf him. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a second place for you. Um, you've kind of, uh, not completely snapped the curse of Jacko and I for you, but, uh, you, you, you broke it a little bit. You put a little bit of a dent in it. Um, going into Hungary next week, do you think you completely shatter it, uh, with a win? Yeah, try and get a win. If not, take him out to turn one. That's the yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> that's one way to do it. Uh, the bot has a broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the bot has. Someone's got to do the bot has. Might as well be me. Yeah, there you go. I, uh, I, mean, I honestly, if you're in the situation last year, you probably could have gotten Possible Bacon to do it. Probably. Yeah, let's be honest. He totally would have. Yeah. He totally would have. Uh, uh, yeah. You definitely would have done it, um, but yeah. Okay, so won't you tell? Won't you go through a little bit of what uh, happened in your race here? From now, did the safety car kind of, or well, yeah, did the safety car kind of change your pit strategy at all? Yeah, obviously, any safety car before your pit strategy, you want to pit onto some fresh tires and uh, just just follow Mystic as best as I can. And then when he wasn't pitting, then I know that then on the and what time away was gonna last until the end anyway. So I had seventy six percent on the front front left in the end. That oh, was okay. more than enough for the lap or two. Okay. Yeah, I was curious about that because I really thought that your guys' tire wears were gonna be a lot higher than what they were. But um yeah, I mean brilliant stuff from you, another another podium back to back for you, so hopefully you can yeah. kinda keep that going into Hungary. Um once again spacing here, Jacko, if you can kinda save me. <laughs> All right, well, uh, yeah, Jim, we saw you in a pretty comfortable P2 there, but the gap between yourself and Mystic was growing lap by lap. I wonder, is that a fact of Mystic just being faster, or was that you, you know, taking it easy, just trying to be safe at a track that we know people can lose the rear quite easily at a couple of different corners that we've been sorting out? I'd say it's both, a case of both. Okay, yeah, yeah, it, it seemed like he had a setup that was more easier on tire wear, which obviously it showed. And it obviously yeah, I think Mystic mentioned about 60% where by the end, so 10% difference over yeah, 30 laps is uh, quite substantial, actually. Yeah. Hmm. Well, congratulations on bringing it home for P2, and uh, sorry we couldn't be there last week to see your, uh, your crowning glory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, okay. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, I didn't go back and watch it, so I, st I still haven't seen it. <laughs> Sorry, who was that? You both go watch it to try and break the curse. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna smash that curse, man. But uh, I was just saying earlier before we got in here, I actually won't be here next week. So uh, Jack was gonna figure out maybe either going to Division One or Division Two. And if you break the curse there, and if you win, then obviously I am the problem with your incapability of winning when I'm around. So. <laughs> We'll, we'll know for sure. It's like Jacko said, it was a scientific experiment going in for next week. Okay. Yeah. Best of luck, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming yeah. in. No problem. All right, Fredhead, unmute yourself. Uh. Yeah, that's a normal word. Uh. <laughs> oh, Porkchop saying he got a D3 podium. Good job. Good job. All right, Fredhead. Um, now. Both Jacko and I, I, I mean, for sure me, and I'm assuming Jacko can uh, agree, give you our, our driver of the day. You, uh, after losing so many places there after that little spin and coming all the way back through the field, 
it was uh it was absolutely brilliant man so uh tell us how you lost the car initially obviously i would imagine it was just the back end but and then uh tell us your kind of where your head was at after you lost it there and uh how you were able to refocus to get yourself all the way back up to the top uh well that's gonna sound really really stupid uh i saw my rear tire temps were low and on the exit of a corner i thought it'd be a great idea to just go half throttle in first gear and just heat up the tires with a bit of wheel spin uh, that did not go to plan and i had did a half spin and i lost all my positions so that, that was just solely on my part just trying to get a little bit more tire temps into the tires and just messing it up completely wow <laughs> okay so yeah I, I imagine you won't be attempting that again oh no i'm still gonna do it oh fair enough I mean, shooter's got to shoot. Uh, but, I mean, okay, so from that point on, you spun out. You, you're face palming your way around the rest of the corner. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, did were you at all rattled after you spun, or were you just kind of pissed? Uh, not really. The car felt fine, because after the spin, every like tire was heated up properly. Uh, <laughs> it was just kind of just... <laughs> it was just go. <laughs> Oh go, but like a couple, five, six seconds back from the rest of the field, so you just push the rest of the way, oh, and then spin again. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh god, so it it worked out, but you just lost hell of time. Yeah. Okay. Much. All right. Well, that's a new one. Have you ever heard that, Jacko? Well, uh, not not the uh, the strategy of warm out the tires by losing positions, but the calm nature of the approach to the recovery I uh, have heard before, and it's commendable, absolutely. Well done. Okay, well that's something that's completely out of my F1 IQ level, so I'll I'll concede to that. But yeah, the still a brilliant drive, working yourself all the way out through the top. Do you think without that spin, there is a uh, maybe second, uh, potentially first on on the table for you? Uh, I think without the spin, I I definitely think the win could have been there. Uh, it would it would have been first, so overtake uh, Jin, which would have been really hard in itself. But uh, I felt like it, it was either a decent win or a top three finish, which I did achieve one of the goals, so I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, it definitely did that. It was now I don't now I'm not gonna give you my driver of the day because I feel like you did something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jacko, save me. Oh, well, uh, actually, Fredhead, we, we noticed a few weeks ago you, you posted a picture of an injury to your hand. How's that feeling now, and did it affect your race at all, or is it completely healed by this point? Uh, it's pretty much healed now. It's just It just needs to grow back properly. It's a bit, like, it looks a bit wonky at the moment, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's all good nonetheless. That's very good. Very good news. And also, we should probably talk about that last lap overtake for P3 uh, on Cake, which was very clean from both drivers. How did you see that from the cockpit? Uh, I felt it wasn't. It felt good, but at the same time, it didn't feel like I I completely passed him because he did come back at me, and I wasn't prepared for that. So I I used all my ERS trying to pass him. I wasn't expecting him, so I uh, had to defend around the outside of. Uh, I don't know what the turn number, just a long right-hander, and it was just, it worked out somehow. It was very exciting to watch from our perspective, and uh, it worked out the right way for you, so uh, congrats once again on another podium. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Best of luck next week in Hungary. Um, here we go. Matt, you there? Unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Matt. Have a good rest of your night. <laughs> <laughs> You getting ready for fantasy hockey? Oh, I'm, I was born ready for fantasy hockey. Yeah, it's, drafts are coming up. Actually, I think I think Fred Head's Canadian too, right? Yeah, Fred, you're from the East Coast. Yep, East Coast. Uh, oh, oh where, we should... where everything is. Oh, close. we should do a Midwest fantasy hockey pool. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't. I don't play. I don't listen to hockey. I don't. I don't like hockey. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, Fred Head's muted. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. We don't do hockey <laughs> around here. <laughs>
no. Don't worry, guys. I'm just gonna. To be fair, your version of hockey is called ice hockey here because normal hockey is without ice. Hey, you guys play field hockey, right? What? Yeah, but that's just hockey. <laughs> field hockey is like hard. Yeah. It is not even. It's not even. I don't know why they call it. Like, why are they both called hockey? They both are completely different sports. Yeah. It's like football and football. Yeah, you know what? They anyway. should. They should, instead of instead of calling it swimming, they should call it water running. <laughs> it makes no sense. But okay, anywho, on t <laughs> Matt, take us through your take us through your qualifying and getting pull. How how good did you feel? Did that was that like peak ninety nine point nine nine percent of Matt Rosie at Zandvoort, or did you leave a little bit on the table? Well, I was like three tenths up in my last lap, but I backed out because I was on a. I did it. I did a first lap. And then I realized it was bad, and I realized I, I got the line with like two seconds left, so I went on another lap. And I was like way off of my time, but I backed out because my tires were a little worn. So from there, I was feeling super confident, like, oh, I've, why do I have so much more pace than these guys? I guess they must have made a mistake or something. Uh, turns out I definitely did not have more pace than them. Even if I paid at the right time, I still wouldn't. Like, Fred, Mystic, and Jim were all faster than me in the race by a lot. Hmm. But. Yeah. What can you do? I still made a stupid call. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, now, what what exactly is your what was your confidence level heading into Zandvoort? Is it like one of your favorite tracks? Like, do you do you feel really comfortable coming in here? Uh, like I feel good. I mean, any of those tracks with like long sleeping corners, I feel pretty good with. Hence so why I, I do well at Hungary usually, but. Yeah, I was like 8 out of 10 confidence, and then after qualifying, I was like 9 out of 10, and then I saw the first couple laps of the race go by, and I was like, okay, 4 out of 10, like Mystic Jin are both going to pass me. And then the safety car came out, and after that, I lost all confidence. I realized pretty quickly I made the wrong call. Okay, so uh, there's, uh, there's just not the way that it went in the end, really. Sorry? Just, it didn't go the way that you wanted it to go, simply put. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, listen, Mystic gifted me a win in Australia last year when he didn't pit under safety car, so I owed him one. Ah, uh, fair enough. And it, it's, to be it's fair, the Canadian way. Yeah. He also really? said he finished with 60% tire wear. I pit on lap 16 for mediums, and I finished with 52% tire wear on my front left. I don't know how. I don't, like, I mean, I didn't set my tire up, my car up to be good on tire wear, but I don't know how he managed his tires so well. So, all the credit to him. Yeah, whatever. Screw you, Mystic. But what? no, I mean, I didn't want to be rude, and you know, yeah. But no, I. It's, uh, I was kind of surprised myself too, to be honest, uh, because I. I thought I was going to have to pit for like a set of softs towards the end, but then when it came to like lap 24, I was like, okay, damn, uh, I still have really low tire wear. And yeah, then, I you know, I, I was pushing for a few laps and, and still, you know, like tire wear was uh, really well, so yeah, I just uh, decided to stay out. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I was expecting, yeah, I was expecting to see you guys, like, come in around lap 24, 25 and blow mm -hmm. by me on softs, because even if you guys did a two-stop, you still would have passed me. But, I mean, good job. Guys. I don't know how you guys did that for, like, 30 laps on the medium, so <laughs> well done. Yeah. Well, well done. Yeah. You, so, bravo to all three of you podiums. And uh, Matt Rosie, you'll get him next week in Hungary. What's your... Now, okay, wait. So heading into Hungary, I think you got the fastest qualifying record. Do you remember that, Jacko? I can pull it up here, but if you have it up. It's not on the top of my mind. No. Okay, yeah. So Matt Rosie, you've actually got the fastest qualifying lap. And Jin, you have the fastest over a race lap. So... Um, yeah, I'm always better in qualifying, unfortunately. There you go. Well... But hopefully, I mean, me and Mystic got a close one last year, so hopefully it's closing in this year. Well, maybe someday you'll be able to trans that over into the race. Yeah. But maybe, maybe, maybe. One of these days. Yeah, but well done again to you, Matt. Uh, got some solid points for your team, so hopefully we can uh, talk to you again in Hungary.
<laughs> Thank you. Oh wait, Jack, did you have anything? Or did you ask anything? Oh, I haven't asked anything, but uh, I was curious, actually, Matt, at what yeah. point you realized um, you know, the strategy was not correct? Was it like instantly after seeing the guys peel off behind you? Was it a bit later when you sort of came back through the field? And did you have knowledge of how long your tires would last? Is that why you decided not to pit? You thought that they wouldn't last? Or was it just a, a, a call to stay on track position? Well, uh, I mean, I didn't realize right away. I mean, my plan was to basically stay on the softs. They were still pretty fresh, which I mean, should have clued into me to like, hey, maybe the mediums can make it. But I mean, even if I was going to pit, I was going to pit the hearts and that would have been a bad call. But yeah, I didn't exactly set up my car to be good on tires because I didn't realize when I did a practice race, I didn't realize how low the tire run was here compared to how it was last game. But yeah. I mean, I think around lap like 11 when I was pushing and I had Hash behind me and I was pulling away on Hash, but then Mystic and Jin were catching me so quickly on the fresh mediums. I was like, even if they do a two stop here and I'm on the fresh mediums, they're going to have so much clean air. I'm going to be stuck in traffic. Like, why did I do this? And then the fact that they made it all the way on the mediums was just like yeah, final, just yeah, ice, yeah final. exactly that makes sense understandable and uh, hopefully next race you have a you know no safety car that will alter this surgery and have a clean fight clean flag on the way see how it goes yeah hopefully yeah hopefully like mystic said he's not he's uh hungry is not his favorite so maybe time to take a stab at that uh championship lead it is my least favorite that's for sure it's my favorite so Oh, Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I still lost to Mystic last year by a couple seconds. Okay, but that was that was <laughs> with a little bit of uh, of luck there. Sure. Yeah, Super Nina's uh, Super Nina's getting in the way of me blowing through a corner by and, accident trying to pass him. And Jin said he's gonna bow task Mystic into turn one as well. So keep that in the back of your mind as well. That's true. So Fred, really... Fred's pretty quick. Yeah, give me the win. <laughs> <laughs> So really quick, I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Yomir as well, man. I mean, Yomir, I put a lot of pressure on Yomir after the safety car. It took me a few laps to figure out like where I could like uh, attack him because I knew it was super difficult to uh, to make a move into T1 with him because he, you know, he had the slipstream and the DRS from Hash, and uh, yeah, we we battled pretty pretty uh, well. That was fun and stuff. Yeah, we actually witnessed a lot of that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a good back. good stream tonight. Yeah, no, there was a lot of uh, good battles. Uh, Zandvoort really didn't... Uh, really uh, fucking showed well. Let's just go with that. Um, quickly, uh, what's, we'll start with uh, Mystic, and then we'll kind of run down the line. How, what do you think... We're, how well of a... How good of a race do you think we're going to see here in Zandvoort? Do you think it's going to be a little boring, like Hungary can be from time to time? Or are we look in for some excitement? Hmm... Personally, I think I think it's gonna be boring. Uh, unfortunately, I think okay. it's probably gonna be like some like hungry type of, type of race. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I could be extremely wrong, but I just get the feeling that it, that it's gonna be kind of like a, a sleeper race after a, I don't know, like a few laps or so. Fair enough. Fair enough. Jin, you still there? You have a word? Yeah, man. Yeah, what do, you, what do you think Zanvert's going to be like this weekend? I'm going to go against the grind and say it's going to throw up something special. Mm. Okay, alright. Is that all? Anything else? Nothing to add? Well, I, don't, I, reckon, I don't reckon Hamilton and Verstappen will finish in the points, let's just say that. Oh, okay. Bold, Something's going to happen. Bold take from Mr. Jin. All right, Fredhead, what says you? Uh, I heard uh, there were some rumors that people are going to try to throw tomatoes at Hamilton. Oh. I don't, I don't know how they're going to manage that, but they're going to try. Maybe banana peel would help. Uh, yeah, give them the little, uh, lose what? Lose three coins and fucking, I don't know, just spin out. Lose three coins, yeah. spin out. Yeah, the, the blue shell. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Rosie, what do you got? Uh, I think it'd be terrible, like Mystic said. Okay. I mean, if you compare it to Hungry this year, it's going to be awful. If you compare it to Hungry normally, it's, it'll probably be better than Hungry normally. Because at least there's, there might be two GRS zones. They're not even sure yet. Oh, jeez. Okay. Probably you can pass in the second one anyway, but... Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not holding that for much help. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. And Jacko, you want to get your th thought once again? Well, I think the uh, the main idea behind uh, Dan Bort this year was the organizers decided to make the roads around from 30 uh, kilometers an hour to 33, which is an idea to try and trap the Mercedes employees by speeding and then arresting them before oh. the race. So uh, that would be a good idea. If they can do it, sure, I'll pull it off. But uh, I think that would be wise for that. <laughs> oh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Best of luck in Hungary. Uh, Jack and I are going to jump back into the other channel. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Congrats, yeah. again. Congrats again. The podiums, guys. Cheers. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, Jacko. It's just you and I now. We don't have to listen to those jamokes anymore. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, that was Zandvoort. I mean, it was a good race. Honestly, it was. It was. It was a fun race. I mean. I I don't know. I'm a space cadet tonight, man. I don't, I'm just absolutely in a in my own world. I have I can't pick any words out of my brain right now. So give us your give us your uh, complete rundown of what took place. Well, I mean, we had the Alpine on pole with Matt Rosie. We've seen it before, where uh, Mystic doesn't necessarily get pole, but in the race he just pulls through uh, with the right strategy today. Uh, he, Jin, uh, several others made it work. Fred had to obviously recover from that mistake on the safety car. But he did so very calmly and uh, did it perfectly, honestly. Uh, Cape was unlucky to uh, be one lap short of a podium. And uh, yeah, that's just how it, how it happens in Zandvoort. You can make wheels, it seems, uh, at least in the game. So that's something that we have a positive to show for that. And now we look on to uh, the weekend, see if real life can run as good a show as uh, Midwest can, which I'll highly doubt. Yeah, yeah, that's very true, very true. I mean, uh... Is it, is it going to be kind of like how Russia is, where Russia is boring watching it in real life, and then when you play it in the game, it's actually a fun track? But uh... no, because Russia is boring in both. Oh, okay. You know, I actually don't <laughs> mind Russia, but whatever. <laughs> we can have different different uh, opinions, I guess. It, it can happen. Okay. It can happen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just to kind of uh, repeat some of the things that you said, it was just. It, the the way it, that it, it took place tonight was um, you can could have predicted it, but you also had to see it. And uh, the way it took place was uh, very exciting and uh, had a lot of twists and turns to the tail from beginning to end. A lot of overtaking in Zandvoort, a fun track that we were just at, and uh, we'll see what it can do for us next week. Now, uh, what about your quickly your thoughts going into Hungary next week, Jacko? I'll be sad to be uh, commentating without you, Crash, but. Yeah. Yeah, definitely an exciting uh, race. I, I always liked Hungary. I know Mystic said he didn't. I think I have a fair idea of why. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we won't go into that too much. And uh, yeah, I just hope to see a similarly exciting race uh, where the lead is uh, up for grabs. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Enjoy, enjoy your week off. Enjoy your vacation from me. We'll just, we'll just say that. Uh, hopefully, yeah. If you can get on with Hotspot, that'd be really cool. Cause Hotspot's a good guy. I don't know if you've ever really talked to him. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he, he runs a good program there. So, hopefully, you guys can, uh, you guys can uh, bring some pride back to uh, Division One without me. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a lot more serious than how, how we take it, or how I take it. But <laughs> it'll, it'll be good. But um, yeah. Any any goodbyes, any shout outs from you, Jack, before I bring it home? No, no, I well actually I will mention that um, as we predicted, there is a, an investigation from Scavney already sent to the stewards trying to appeal this penalty. So that might be one position back uh, for that massive crash on turn four. So that's the only thing I really have as a hot take so far since the race and uh, looking forward to next week. Yeah. S sounds good. Um, that yeah, that's it for me. If you're Canadian, enjoy your Labor Day long weekend. I am going away, so uh, I'm, I'll be enjoying mine. Stay safe, everyone. Um, 
don't want to get political so that's all I'll, that's all i'll keep it at but yeah enjoy enjoy your long weekend if you're in canada enjoy your weekend uh have a good rest of your thursday uh almost at the end of the week uh the the weekend for the rest of the world as well is right around the corner so stay safe enjoy uh and yeah have a good night we've been the midwest f1 league and that is it